welcome to the very first episode of Journey into Misery. I am one of your hosts. Am I the am I the host? Are you my I think you're the host. Am I are you my permanent guest? Yeah. Uh, I am co- Karen Shiak. I'm not a co-host, am I? No, you're not a co-host. I'm sort of being talked at. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am Karen Shiak. I am the host of the show. Uh, the lovely lady to my right is Helena Hart. Hi. Uh, she is... I'm going to be very confused with yes. this whole thing. So, what is Journey to Misery? <laughs> uh, shall we start with how we came up with the idea? We were watching The Flash. Yes. Uh, yesterday. Yes. And I was talking about the reverse flash. And we will cover the flash in a future episode very, very soon. But basically, you said, how many flashes are there? And you laughed. <laughs> and I laughed and went, well... And I went through the, the history of the flash from Jay Garrick to Barry Allen to Wally West to Bart Allen... I had Max Mercury, Johnny Quick, Jesse Quick, Excess, the Tornado Twins, all that stuff, which we'll cover again in a future episode. But we had we kind of had, we did have fun doing it. You, you enjoyed this. <laughs> I was just really confused. But you enjoyed, you, yeah, you enjoyed yeah. it. Like the, the the first thing I want to make clear with this show is that it's not just me sitting down with a captive audience, going <laughs> listen to my nerdy stuff. Like, it was me being interested. Yeah. So, and inquisitive. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to ever come across like I'm mansplaining anything. <laughs> like, That's just everything you say. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. We're going to take kind of like a complex or a character with a long history or just something interesting. A problematic fave. Yeah, problematic faves. <laughs> Stuff that I can explain to Helena that will make. I don't want to purposefully confuse you but you're going to ask questions you're going to be like like you said you're... something that's not like straight up yeah so another example we did we, we did Robin and it was straightforward to start with and then I mentioned I was Jay- like whoa plot yeah. twist yeah and, well a lot of that came in with the New 52 which we'll talk about a lot in this episode the New 52 I'm not even a fan mm-hmm. and like I'm annoyed <laughs> So, another thing I want to make perfectly clear is, I'm not an expert, I don't claim to be an expert. As we go through this, I have numerous wiki tabs open, I've got some notes. There are some people who I do consider experts in this sort of stuff, people like Chris Sims or John Morris, who could tell you all this stuff off the top of the head, and they have fantastic resources in which they do that. So, if you're interested in people who really, really know what I'm talking about, those are the guys to check out. This is it's very broad strokes, that's what I want to do. Yeah. A lot of broad stroke stuff. I might get some details wrong. I apologise for that. It's more about me being an enthusiastic fan going, isn't this weird and awesome and terrible at the same time? Yeah, like, I don't know what's wrong and what's right. So. Yeah, but I, I don't want to... I'm not going to intentionally mislead you. Yeah. But I'm, I might get something wrong. Yeah. Okay, so this episode, episode one, is about the DC Comics multiverse. <laughs> Here we go. Because at first, we were going to do The Flash as the first episode, and we're probably going to do that for the, for the second episode. And I thought, okay, it's The Flash. So we're going to talk about Golden Age, then Silver Age, Earth 1, Earth 2, Pre-Crisis, Post-Crisis, Flashpoint, New 52. I should probably put a disclaimer in at the start of the episode. And I started planning the disclaimer, and I thought, that's a whole episode. And I'm, I'm going to have to do that. If we do Hawkman, I'm going to have to do that. If we do... Batman or Robin or Superman, I'm going to have to put that disclaimer in every episode. So why not just do... First episode of the podcast is the disclaimer. This is what we mean when we say multiverse. So what do you think of... like? What's your interpretation of the multiverse? Of the concept of a multiverse? That there's like a set of like superheroes mm-hmm. or characters and they occur in like a sort of circle okay like there are like different worlds yeah and like there's like one version of like superman in one and one version of superman in the other yeah and that like they vary slightly but yeah they're the same in a sort of base way yeah that's pretty accurate 
But I, I have a feeling it's going to get a lot more complex than that. It's going to be some weird stuff. Okay, so we're going to jump straight in with this. Down the rabbit hole. The Golden Age of uh, comics. And that's something you said you didn't really understand the ages of comics. No. It is, it's a very nebulous... There's no set point of when it starts or when it ends. Well, there's a lot of set points of when it starts, but no real set point of when they end. So the Golden Age pretty much starts... You can trace it back to a bit earlier, but the Golden Age starts with Action Comics number 1, 1938, the debut of Superman. 38. 1938. 1938. 1938. So, and Action Comics number 1 is published by Detective Comics Incorporated, which becomes National Comics, which eventually becomes DC Comics. Yes. Detective Comics, DC yes. Comics. Yeah. Detective Comics, Comics. Yeah. And Superman's a massive hit for them, so they diversify the line. Yeah. They bring in more and more superheroes. Makes sense. So you have Superman, Clark Kent, Batman, Bruce Wayne... You have The Flash, who is a guy called Jay Garrick. And you saw the picture of Jay Garrick, didn't you? I think so. He's the guy with the the metal hat. Oh, yes. Yeah. The guy that's got, like, the colander on his head. Yeah, he's got, like, a colander on his head. <laughs> yeah, you can see what it looks like. I've got the picture up on my laptop now. He just looks like a guy. Yeah, he's, he's wearing, like, jeans almost. Yeah, but he's not, like, suited up. Yeah, well, he is. Yeah, but not in, like, well, the you way consider, you'd expect. Uh, yeah. This isn't about Jay Garrick, this isn't about The Flash. Uh, but, yeah, Jay Garrick, so who's... Like, Jay, Jay Garrick's origin was he inhaled hard water vapours in his laboratory and that gave him super speed. You had Alan Scott, that's the first Green Lantern there. Okay. With his ridiculous purple and red costume. That cape is... Yeah. Like, that's beautiful. And his yeah. origin was based more in... Like a lot of the old stuff was more supernatural or mythology based, like gods and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself with a lot of these characters. The point is, these are heroes at the time. These are the golden age heroes, and then comics got out of fashion in a big, big way. They were really popular during World War Two, but they faded away. There's some stuff to do with a guy called Frederick Wortham who publishes a book called Seduction of the Innocent, which is comics are evil and homosexual and they're going to rot your children's brains. A lot, right? a lot of the stuff you get about like video games these days, or you got about like Marilyn Manson songs in the 90s. <laughs> and that was the sort of stuff comics had around that time. So the comics just faded out of fashion. So then in 1956, comics come back and they come back in a big, big way. Showcase number four from DC Comics by Robert Kanegar, John Broom and Carmine Infantino is the kind of the rebirth of the Flash. It's a brand new Flash, Barry Allen. And he's got nothing to do with Jay Garrick. In his universe, in his in his comic, Jay Garrick Flash is a comic book, which is where he gets the idea to be the Flash. And that really kicks off like an like people everyone agrees. Showcase number four Debut Barry Allen is the beginning of the Silver Age. Is that like the start of the multiverse? Not yet. Because it's like a universe within a universe. Kind of. Like, not officially. Okay. Like, yeah. Like, linking worlds. Yeah, kind of. But it's not like officially acknowledged. Okay. So it's not like a formed thing yet? No. It's. Yeah, like, what we know now, technically. But not really. Okay. But from there you get a load more reinventions of heroes. There's a new Atom, there's a new Green Lantern. Superman's the same, Batman's the same, but a lot of the characters are reinvented with science fiction twists. And that's your universe then. Until September 1961, the Flash number 123. Like my dream comic, if I could, if I had the money to buy one comic, I'd buy the Flash number 123. It's iconic because it, this is the birth of the multiverse. It's an issue where Barry Allen and Jay Garrick meet. Barry Allen like shifts his vibrational pattern and he crosses over into Earth 2. And he meets Jay Garrick. And they have a team up, they fight the Riddle of the Shade and the Thinker. And from then on it's acknowledged that all of the like post-showcase comics are Earth 1. And all of the pre-showcase comics are Earth 2. 
And like I said, I know I know I'm missing over some. I'm skipping some stuff here, and I'm probably getting some stuff wrong. I apologise to any listeners who are there seething. Like I said, it's a very very broad strokes kind of overview, like just to kind of get you up to speed. Some new angry Tumblr messages. Probably, probably some very angry Tumblr messages. So then you have Earth One, and you have Earth Two, and the, there are Earth Two comics as well, and it's kind of like, what if they aged in real time? Okay. So, Batman and Catwoman are married, and they have a daughter who's the Huntress, and Robin has grown up, and he's a superhero in his own right. So, they're kind of being published side by side, and a few years later, they start doing crossovers between the Justice League and the Justice Society. Yeah. The Justice Society is the Earth 2 team, mm-hmm. and the Justice League is the Earth 1 team. In 1963, they do Crisis on Earth 1. Okay. And then they keep doing these, they're very popular, these Crisis comics, these crossover comics. So there's like Crisis on Earth 3, and Earth 3 is the, it's kind of like the evil universe. Okay, yeah. There's, a, there's always like the alternate universe. The yeah. Evil one. It's like, um, in the evil universe, instead of Superman, you have Ultraman. Yeah. And instead of Batman, you have Owlman. Owlman? Owlman. Owlman? Yeah, owls eat bats. Yeah, they do. <laughs> don't leave, don't. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, you have Owlman, you have uh, Superwoman. I'm sure he's great, but... Owlman, I, I dig Owlman. Owlman's cool. Owlman but... just doesn't sound as cool as I Batman. I know. Owls are great, but... Yeah, you do You do love owls. <laughs> so, yeah, but... this is the bats, ex- too. You do love bats. <laughs> uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Helena is a zoology student. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not a zoology student. Wildlife conservation and zoology. Yeah. So, pretty much. So, the multiverse begins expanding quite rapidly at this point because DC Comics start buying up kind of defunct comics companies and their intellectual property. And oh, we've been over this as well before, but for anyone who's actually, I don't know why you'd listen to this, actually learn something. It's more for the entertainment value of me explaining it to you. <laughs> but, um. Just me, like. Having a meltdown. There's Fawcett Comics, which is Captain Marvel, the original Captain Marvel, who is now known as Shazam. That's another episode. <laughs> it's a whole other thing. Uh, there's the Charlton characters, which we discussed, you know, the Watchmen thing. Yeah. Where, like, the Blue Beetle question, Captain Atom. Uh, you have Quality Comics, where like, you have, like, Uncle Sam and the Freedom Fighters. So these are all separate universes at this point. You have the Fawcett Universe, the Charlton Universe, Quality Universe. There's also a big tendency to do imaginary stories, which Go on. is. It's kind of just the idea of going like, well, let's just do a story outside of the continuity. Yeah, we're just going to do a story for the sake of yeah, the like, story. Like, Marvel Comics do it a lot, but they call it What If. Okay. So it's like, what if... Da, 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 da. Just just like, just like one issue is like, oh, well, wouldn't it be cool if... Well, some of these imaginary stories catch on, so they come back to them again and again. Like, there's the, uh, the Super Sons, which is Superman and Batman and their children. Who are like? That's amazing. Yeah. Why is it not called Super Dads? <laughs> and they just like dad plans. <laughs> That'd be amazing. And these are ideas that keep coming up again and again and again. So it's quite unwieldy, and there's there's a lot going on. And they keep doing these crisis comics where there's crossovers between universe, and universe, and universe. 1985. They decided we've got all this stuff. It's very very daunting for new readers. Yeah. So I, I feel that. Yeah. And this is 1985. This is That's 30- why I was like, where do I start with this? There's just so much, and none of it makes any sense. So, yeah, this is 30 years ago, where they're like, this is too unwieldy. Yeah, like, maybe we should like make this less of a mindfuck. Yeah. So, they, they do this comic called Crisis on Infinite Earths, where there's this big, bad MacGuffin, just type, like, boss-level character called the Anti-Monitor, that's what it looks like. I'm sure you, you can Google the Anti-Monitor if you're listening to this. Okay. And he's going around just killing universes. Just straight up destroying universes. So, and Chris Sims, friend of the show, he describes Crisis as the first time where everything was truly at stake. Okay. Like, everything you loved could end. Because this guy's just gonna yeah, destroy like, everything. It's kind of like a a double-edged sword because since then everything kind of has to be at the stakes or higher. Yeah. And you kind of know that 
it's never going to be as big as this. Yeah. Uh, the story of Crisis on Infinite Earth is kind of irrelevant to what we're talking about, but you have five universes left. The Anti-Monitor destroys all of the universes except for five. Okay. So that clears a whole bunch of stuff up. Yeah. Supposedly. Which is Earth 1, Earth 2, Earth 4, which is... So just got rid of Evil Earth 3. Yeah. Why? I believe it's a story point. I've not read Crisis in a long, long time. And I just didn't think it was relevant enough to keep. Earth 3 comes back. <laughs> oh, Earth, wow. Earth, Earth 3, of course it does. Earth 3 comes back. <laughs> it's a triumphant return. So you have Earth 1, Earth 2, Earth 4, which is the Charlton characters. Yeah. Earth S is the uh, Shazam characters. Earth S. Earth S is the Shazam characters. And Earth X is the Uncle Sam and the Freedom Fighters characters. Okay. So those characters all get folded up into one Earth, and then that has a new continuity where everything happened. Everything just happened. Like, everything happened within that universe. Look, we're just going to take it as that. Yeah, yeah, so there was a lot of continuity fixes. Like, Jay Garrick was the first Flash in World War Two, and then Barry Allen was the Flash inspired by him. Like, a lot of stuff didn't happen, but a lot of stuff happened easier. Does that make sense? Yeah. It was, it was a way to get everything under one umbrella. Yeah. And also, and this is going to be important later, a number of characters went off to a pocket dimension, which was essentially heaven. Okay. And it was... Did they die? No. It was just... They just sort of ascended to this other realm. Yeah. It was Superman and Lois Lane of Earth 1. Okay. Alexander Luther of Earth 3. Okay. Because if all the good guys are bad on Earth 3, Lex Luthor is... Good? Yeah. Wow. What so, a world. Yeah. So, Alexander Luther of Earth 3 and Superboy of the Prime Universe. Yeah. The Prime Universe What's is... The prime universe? This yeah. one we're sitting in right now. Like, legit. Yeah. Actual universe. Yeah. So they go off into this pocket dimension and once again to cite uh, Chris Sims. He describes as like Golden Age Superman... Action Comics number one lifting the car over his head. Like, that's his reward. It's like, thank you for everything you've done for us. Go enjoy heaven. Not not just within the comic, but without the comic, without of the, out of the comic as well. Like, the readers and the writers and the creators going, thank you for everything you've done for us. Like, you can be at peace now. Yeah, like, you were good, you served your yeah. purpose, but and bye. That's going to be important shortly as well. That they'll come back. Yes, unfortunately. No! Unfortunately, yes. Nothing stays dead, nothing, yeah, nothing is sacred. Nothing stays dead in comics. So that's uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Some, there are some important story beats. Supergirl dies, Barry Allen dies, Wally West becomes the Flash. We will cover that in later episodes dedicated to those characters. This is about the broad strokes of the multiverse. So, Crisis on Infinite Earths, there's one Earth now. There is no multiverse. Okay. It's very important. There is no multiverse. It's sort of just a bunch of Earths crushed into one. Yeah. Like, this like, is like, Earth. It's, it's, like, it's like they've got, like, these four Earths under, like, a rug and just stamped down until it was all smooth. Wouldn't be like a rolling pin? That's, is that a better analogy? It's like they mashed them all together. And then rolled it out into... I was thinking like a cheesecake. <laughs> there's, there's like lot... they crushed the biscuits and then they made a base. Yeah. There's a lot, there's a lot of metaphors. So, and that, that's what you have from 1985 to 1994. Okay. Where you have Zero Hour, a crisis in time. Where instead of... Uh, like Crisis on Infinite Earths was a crisis in space. Yes. Not just space as in outer space. Well, like, space time. Yeah, yeah. So this is a crisis in time. And I've never actually read Zero Year, but the basic gist of it is that it fixes just a few things that Crisis didn't get around to. So, like, when things don't make sense, they just release a comic, like, this is how it happened. Kind of. Like, Crisis created a lot of problems because it's kind of impossible to fix everything. Like, Marvel has never done anything like this. Does Marvel just... Does it just work? Yeah. Like, Marvel has multiverse. Marvel has a big multiverse. Yeah. 
Yeah. But it just kind of embraces its weird quirks and you just kind of keep chugging along. Whereas DC, they keep doing this and... They could have just done a Marvel and been like, this is, yeah. They could have, but like 30 years ago they did a Crisis on Infinite Earths. But... Kind of messed it up for themselves. Yeah. There was some stuff that Crisis didn't fix. Notably the Legion of Superheroes, who are a team in the future, who were inspired by Superboy. After Crisis on Infinite Earths, like, Superman was never Superboy. Okay. He like he was Clark Kent and then he became Superman. And that's it. Yeah. So Zero Hour fixed some Superboy stuff, some Legion stuff, some Wonder Woman stuff, uh, some Hawkman stuff as well. I'm not touching Hawkman today. Hawkman is maybe a two parter. Oh god. I haven't even heard of Hawkman. Yeah. What and the... he's that important. He deserves yeah. two. But yeah, so after Zero Hour stuff gets like rejiggered about and then you have not a completely new universe, but like they, they ironed it out a bit. A lot, of, a lot of metaphors in this one. I apologise for that. Very mixed metaphors all over the place. And then and this is this is a complex one. Oh god! This took me quite a while to get my head around, and I'm not sure if I can fully explain it. Listeners who know what I'm talking about, as soon as I say this next word, they're gonna go, "Oh yeah," <laughs> and this is hyper time. <laughs> oh god! And I'm just going to I'm going to read from the Wikipedia here just for a bit just to try and uh fix some stuff. The basic premise of the idea was summed up by writer Mark Wade as it's all true. It promises that all of the stories ever told about a character are equally valid stories. For example, despite overt contradictions between the versions of Superman that appeared in just, and it just list versions of Superman like uh the TV shows, the movies, cartoons, the comics obviously. No so one like- of the- any version of Superman happened, happened. Yeah. Deal with it. No one of these versions supersedes any other as canon. So, like, Hypertime, and to skip over some of the Wikipedia, Hypertime is a superdimensional construct which, under very limited circumstances, can allow versions of characters from one continuity to interact with versions from another. Okay. So, it's kind of like... There's branches. This is how I always understood it, and I could be super wrong about this. But there's like branches and occasionally they can cross over and become the same and then branch back out. Like Evolution. Bro- like yeah, like like branches like like branches of time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like a lineage. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. If without so, yeah. explaining a bunch of science yeah. it makes sense. Yeah, there's a, there's another bit in the wiki here that says hypertime works like this. The timeline and continuity background of any given story is like a river. With a nearly infinite number of distributaries, alternate timelines, branching off. Most of the time, these alternate timelines go off on their own and never intersect with the main timeline. On occasion, the branches return, feeding back into the main timeline, sometimes permanently, sometimes temporarily. Thus, history can sometimes change momentarily and then change back or not. So, that, that, do, you, do you get hyper time? The explanation of it that Wikipedia gives makes it seem a lot more complex than how I'm perceiving it. Okay. It just seems like there's a bunch of stuff and sometimes they connect back and yeah. sometimes they're just out there. Mm-hmm. But it all happened. I I, I, I kind of like Hypertime a lot because I feel like it's a very... Once you, once you get the hang of it, it's a very elegant solution to the multiverse. Yeah, because it's just like, just ignore everything. This is all cool. But it's been largely abandoned. Because, like, like, as you know, as I'm sure, like, this is no spoiler, the multiverse comes back. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware of that. Mm-hmm. I'm aware that there's a whole like multiverse thing, and there was like a bunch of diagrams recently. Oh yeah, that that like that, that's the end. That's that's the big finale of this. Episode. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> I just saw people crying over it, and I was like, click that off. <laughs> so that's hyper time, and that takes us up to. Oh God, no! <laughs> I just checked my notes, and no, it's time for. Infinite Crisis. Okay. So Infinite Crisis was the 20 year anniversary of Crisis on Infinite Earths. We decided to kind of like pay homage to it, bring back some of it, and use it to once again, like, rejigger some stuff about. Yeah. So the story of Infinite Crisis is the Superman of Earth 1, Lois Lane of Earth 1, Superboy Prime, and Alexander Luther in Paradise. Lois Lane becomes sick. The suit Superman wants to save her, so he wants to replace the Earth that's there now with 
his Earth too, because he he can like they can view the Earth as there. Yeah. And they're like, this sucks. They've ruined it. They can like kind of zoom yeah. out. Yeah, and there's kind of like a weird meta commentary about how dark and gritty and like terrible DC Comics had got, where it's like you've got like the perfect Superman, like yeah. the ideal of Superman, looking at DC Comics and going, ugh. Like, what have we done? Yeah. And there's some stuff where Superboy Prime punches, like, a barrier that separates their paradise and the universe. And that causes ripples within the universe that changes some stuff. So that's initially how Jason Todd comes back to life. The second Robin. And there's some other stuff in there as well. Like, people make fun of that all the time. Like, oh, Jason Todd came back to life because Superboy Prime punched a wall. (laughs) It does sound... As dumb as it is. Yeah. Once again, the story of Infinite Crisis isn't super relevant. It, it plays like it plays off the story of Crisis on Infinite Earths. It's not good. It's not a good comic at all. Is it just a one comic? Oh, it's it's a, it's a miniseries. Okay. So it's like seven issues. Seven issues. So it's yeah. just like a little stopgap, like. We're just going to move some stuff around. Well, it's, it's an event comic. After Crisis on Infinite Earths yeah. and Marvel's okay. Secret Wars, mm-hmm. like, event comics became really popular, where, like, it's like a summer blockbuster every summer, and more than that now, like, twice a year. They do big event comics where all of the heroes come together to fight some threat or another. Yeah. Like, Zero Hour was another one of them. Civil War, you've heard of Civil War? I have heard of Civil War. Civil War is an event I'm comic. Civil War. And Infinite Crisis was, like, DC's event comic. Yeah. For that year. Some stuff happens in Infinite Crisis and Superboy Prime and his, like, homies are trying to bring back their Earth 2. Some stuff goes weird and Earth gets kind of split apart into its separate parts. Yeah. And then recombined as New Earth. That makes sense. And once again, I've not read Infinite Crisis for maybe five years. I probably should have done some research going into this episode. We decided to do this today. But yeah, that is Infinite Crisis. Superboy Prime is evil now. He, he Why? M- comics. Fair enough. He murders uh, Superman of Earth 1. That Superman who got that happy ending Aww. gets punched in the face till he's dead. Wow, he literally gets punched to death. Yeah. By a child. Yeah, by an alternate universe, alternate universe version, version of, himself. of himself as a teenager. Teen angst. Teen angst for real. So that's Infinite Crisis. After Infinite Crisis, every single DC comic jumps one year into the future. Okay. Under the one year later banner. And like for the next year, they publish a weekly comic book series called 52. Don't confuse this with the new 52. God. For some why reason, why fifty-two? Like, why is that number so like I'm important? Not, I'm not entirely sure. I'm still not entirely sure. Did they wait? They did it every week. Well, yeah, they they released a comic called Fifty Two. It was released every week for a 52 year. Fifty-two weeks in a year. Yeah. 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 So it was a that yearly comic. That explains why. Yeah, but it doesn't explain why the new Fifty Two is the new Fifty Two. Maybe it's just like we made a new one. No, it's no, because it's a. It's a whole thing. Yeah, like, I could, it'll make sense, it'll make more sense in a minute because the new Fifty Two means more than just because I told you there's Fifty Two comics. Yes. It means more than that. Never had like a Fifty Two again. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I see that on Fifty Two, and, and I'm, I'm like, Ugh. so the uh, Fifty Two the comic. There's a lot of stories in there, and most of them don't pertain to the idea of a multiverse. Okay. But the the big reveal at the end of Fifty Two is that there, the multiverse came back at Infinite Crisis. Alright. And there are now 52 new worlds. Well, there are 52... There are 52... Instead of the five from before? Well, no, because the five from before were the ones that were left. And then they got crashed into the yeah. new world. Yeah, but before the before Crisis on Infinite Earths, there were... Infinite Earths. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Now, Jesus, and now there's 52. Now there's 52 universes. Universes or Earths? Universes. Oh, God. That's a whole thing. Yeah. And they're arranged in this... This is... Once again, this is something else, but there's a thing... This is another point where people listening are going to go, 
Oh, how, like, where's he going with this? The There's a thing called the Orrery of Worlds. I didn't even mention the monitor. I didn't even mention the monitor. What's the monitor? Well, you know, like I mentioned, the anti-monitor. I think so. The, the monitor is a guy who watches over the universe. Okay. So there's this race called the Monitors, and they kind of, like, exist outside of the multiverse. And each monitor has his own universe. So like a god? No, not really. Like a um, a god that's not omnipotent. Yeah, I like a watchman almost. Yeah, like a without s- using the word watchman. Yeah, yeah. That's the best way to describe it. And they have this thing called the Orrery of Worlds, which is all the universes. Like you know, in Men in Black. Yes. <laughs> you know. The galaxy is in the dog's collar. Yeah. It's kind of like that. They have this thing called... Orion? Yeah. Orion? Well, the dog's called Orion. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, They have this thing called the Orrery of Worlds, which is kind of like this... Kind of like this hourglass kind of thing. Yeah. And all the Earths are... Because Earth's the most important planet in the universe, obviously. Yeah, because that's what the people are. Yeah. And they're arranged in like an upside down pyramid structure. Yeah, like the top of an hourglass. Pardon? Like the top yeah. of an hourglass. And Earth, Earth One, or no, sorry, at this point, New Earth is the bottom one. Okay. So if anything happens to that one, everything flows. Yeah, everything, like they all fall apart. So yeah. It's still the most important one. And I've really lost the where I'm going with this now. <laughs> uh, there's some stuff in Final Crisis to do with the multiverse. Not that much, really. There is a monitor in it. I don't think it's super important. There's no lasting changes to the multiverse out of Final Crisis. I'm sure we'll get to Final Crisis at some point. I love it. It's one of my favourite comics of all time. But I I have not prepared to talk about Final Crisis tonight. It's, it's just too important. It's, it's very important. So then after 52, you have this new multiverse... 52 universes, which is where you get the term the New 52. Okay. It's not just the New 52 comics, it's the New 52 that is the multiverse. So, the New 52 comes back in 2011, where they do a series called Flashpoint. Yes, I've heard of that. I don't know why. When... Oh, this this is actually important. I missed this. I apologise. I've got to imagine listeners are like... You can, like, dub it in. No, we're just freewheeling it. Oh, okay. I imagine listeners are just like wringing their hands going... What the fuck is he talking yeah, about? Yeah, like if anyone's still listening. But in Final Crisis, Barry Allen comes back to life. Yeah. And uh, How does he come back to life again? I can't even remember. I'm not a massive Barry Allen fan. Like, I'm a Wally West guy. But Barry Allen's like the guy. Yeah, he is. But like, Barry Allen was dead for as long as he was alive. Okay. In in comic, in real world time. Yeah. But, uh, so yeah, Baron came back and he was the Flash again. In in the comic, if you picked up a comic called The Flash. It would be Barry Allen. Barry, yeah, it was Barry Allen. And it was revealed, and this is something that they've adapted for the TV show, Professor Zoom. <laughs> yes, the best name ever. The Reverse Flash. Went back in time, killed the Flash's mum, yeah. framed his dad for it. Okay. Like in like in the TV show. Yes. Flashpoint is when Barry Allen decides to go back in time, stop Professor Zoom, and fucks everything up for ever. Why? By that not happening, it's kind of like you know the. The butterfly. The butterfly effect. Not the butterfly, kind of. But you know, like the episode of Simpsons where Homer goes back in time, steps in the uh, butterfly. Yeah, and like everything just yeah. changes. Yeah, Barry Allen wakes up and everything's really weird. Like, Batman is, instead of Thomas and Martha being getting shot, it's Bruce that gets shot. Okay. So Thomas becomes Batman and Martha becomes the Joker. That's awesome. Mm. It sounds awesome, at least. There's a whole thing where Superman was captured by the government as soon as he landed. 
because Superman's this really, really, and he's just been like in a bunker for the whole time. Like the ideas in Flashpoint are a lot better when I describe them than the comic it was. Poorly executed. Yeah. So like Superman's like this really, really skinny, pale dude, because he was never given, he was was never exposed to sunlight to get his powers. Yeah. So Barry Allen has to fix this mess that he's made. Like the comic tries to spin it that it's Zoom's fault, but like. It's all Barry Allen's fault. It's all, all Barry Allen's fault. But, uh, basically, he fixes it because this mystery woman called Pandora, who doesn't matter. (laughs) Right, at all. She's a deus ex machina. Okay. She shows up and she's like, your universe was never the way it was meant to be. There's these three timelines that need to come together. And it was the DC Universe, the Wildstorm Universe... And some of the vertical characters like Swamp Thing and Constantine. Okay. So they all got folded in together. And then you had the new 52. Seems seems reasonable. No, it's really not. <laughs> and the new 52 changed everything so that everything happened within five years. Yeah, yeah you mentioned that. So every single comic that yeah. you bought was five years after the formation of the Justice League except the Justice League comic where the first six issues were the formation of the Justice League and then it skipped ahead to catch up with everything. Five years is not enough. Five years is not enough time. It's just... They crammed in, yeah. like... like we t- And we'll talk about this when we get to Robin years. in a full episode. But Batman had, like, four Robins in five years. Yeah, like I said before, that there was just, like, serial murders. Yeah. And it just, like... It's like people just graduate in high school. So Like, each year is a new one. That's where we are now. New 52, clean slate, loads of, loads of stuff different. Like, Superman's parents died uh, uh, when he was a teen. There's some stuff with Robin, uh, some stuff with Kid Flash. There's a lot of changes, a lot of stuff stayed the same. Some of the Wonder Woman stuff is really, really good. The Wonder Woman stuff in New 52 is impeccable. Like, a lot of really good interesting changes rather than changes for the sake of changes but I say that as a biased person it was a stunt to bring in new readers and it did yeah it got attention like it's a change yeah people are going to be interested now there's a comic called Multiversity I know of that yeah and I know that everyone was in a rush to get it yeah it's the one that I am absolutely giddy about a multiverse is written by Grant Morrison, who's one of my favourite writers. And it's... I think it's a seven or eight issue miniseries. But each issue takes place on a different universe. Hence multiversity. Yeah. But it goes back to that first idea of Jay Garrick is a character in Barry Allen's world. Because each universe is a comic within another universe and the characters in one book will be reading the book that you just read last month oh okay yeah so like the flash thing at the beginning yeah so yeah and it's about that was the multiverse yeah just like a sort of foreshadowed yeah like unintentionally yeah so they didn't realize what they had until 123 issues in so multiverse is what happening now and there's this big threat to the multiverse and heroes from all over the multiverse are coming together to fight it. And there's some really cool issues and really cool ideas for the multiverse. And they're bringing back the Earth 4, which is the Charlton. Yeah. What about Earth 3? Earth 3. Oh, okay. When did Earth 3 come back? Earth 3 came back in the mid-90s, kind of. Where Grant Morris, and this is going to be confusing. Grant Morris and Frank Quietly did a. I'm not sure if it's a prestige one shot, which is kind of like an oversized one shot, or if it's an original graphic novel. I'm not entirely sure how many pages it is. Uh, it's called Earth 2. Okay. And that, that's, what, that's why it's confusing, because it's called Earth 2. Because it's about Earth 3. Well, it's not about Earth 3. But it's the return it's a, of Earth 3. It's about, it's about the antimatter universe. Okay. Which is 
essentially Earth 3. Yeah. But be- because when this comic came out, Earth 3 didn't exist. Yeah. They created the Antimatter Universe, which was already a thing, because it's a thing within Green Lantern. Okay. But the Antimatter Universe was just the return of the of the crime syndicate of America. Yeah. Which is Ultraman, Owlman, Superwoman, Power Ring, those characters. And then in the new multiverse, the multiverse, the multiverse, yeah. Earth 3 is, once again, the evil universe. And that was a big story last year, where Earth 3 invaded... Earth One. So just like the evil guys. Yeah. And but it it was stupid and it's like Earth like Earth Three, Universe Three, whatever. Another dumb move. Yeah, like they they tried to say like that's where evil comes from. Oh, they need to stop apologizing for stuff. Just yeah. like accept that you did stuff wrong, mm-hmm. like but stop making comics about it. This is the map of No, the... no, it's the circle. This is the map of the multiverse. Yeah. That is not what I thought it was. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> at all. So you have your 50 universes in here. Okay. So I can, I can... Are any of them on different levels or are they just there? They're supposed to be... Well, they're within the orrery of worlds. Yeah. they got that much. Yeah. And then outside the multiverse, you have some other stuff as well. So you have Dream, which is, you know, the Sandman. We're talking about the Sandman. Yeah. They have, like, Dream. Like different realms. Yeah. You have Hell, you have Nightmare. Heaven, all that kind of Yeah, you have Apocalypse and New Genesis, which is New God stuff. And once again, New Gods is something we'll cover in its, it's own like episode. It's like opposites. Yeah. You have Lim- like a colour wheel. Yeah, you have Limbo. I, uh, one personal one that I love is Quiz. Quiz, it's kind of irrelevant to the point in that I don't need to bring it up, but I, just, I like the quizzes in it. Where's Quiz? Uh, quiz is just, it's, just it's, a th- it's a thing from a small Grant Morrison story that's been forgotten. Well, they just put it in. Yeah, and he's just put it in. And there's mm-hmm. stuff along the side of the map. It's a really cool map, but I imagine it's very daunting. It's terrifying. <laughs> it's, it's what... But, so yeah, uh, that pretty much brings us up to today. Multiversity is still ongoing, so we don't know how it ends yet. So are they just covering all aspects of that map? Well, no, uh, there's only about eight issues or so. The first issue was kind of like a, a set-up that brought some of the characters together. Then each issue after that, uh, there was a universe where everyone's kind of like pulp heroes. Like, Doc Savage kind of... Pre, pre-superhero combat characters. Mm-hmm. There was an issue that's kind of like a return to the Super Sons, but as like a Kardashian reality show. Oh, that's amazing. So it's like Superman and Batman solved crime. Or well, Superman, Batman and the Justice League and all the heroes solved crime. So there's nothing for their children to do but be celebrities. Kind of like Kind of like how celebrities these days are famous for being famous. Yeah. It's kind of like a superior version of that. That's amazing. There's uh, the issue that just came out recently, Pax Americana, is the Watchmen issue that uh, you had to flip through. The, yes. be- the very, very complex the one. The dense as hell one. Yeah. There's an issue coming up, which is the Shazam characters. And it's going to be interesting where Multiversity goes, because it's all about there's this threat that is a comic book. Like, ultra, like everyone... Everyone within Multiversity is reading this Ultra Comics, and that's turning them evil. Okay. It's just it's this comic that's like a virus idea. Oh, okay. And what's interesting is everyone's reading. Everyone is reading this comic with the Multiversity. That comic is coming out. That's like, oh no! That's like the last issue of Multiversity, and Grant Morrison's promised that in that issue. He's gonna turn you into a superhero, and you're gonna like you're gonna win oh, the day. That's amazing. That's really cool. Because it's like there's layers and layers, so that's like fourth wall. Yeah. Like you are the story now. So, so there's like this there's this universe, but then in this universe, say, say there's like, uh, and it's not 
this simple but there's Earth 1 and in Earth 2 their comics are of Earth 1 and in Earth 3 their comics are of Earth 2 and so on and so on. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but it's, it's not, it's more like you have Earth 23 and in Earth 42 their comics are Earth 23 and then in Earth 15 their comics are Earth 42. So it's some of it's linear and some of it's yeah. very shuffled. But like the top layer of that is us. The real world. Yeah, so we're... Prime Earth, whatever it was. Yeah, we're yeah. still a universe within the multiverse. Yeah, because it covers all yeah. the universes. Yeah. So, that was the multiverse. It's basically my attempt to just try and give a primer. Like, do you feel like you understand it more? I definitely understand it more, because my concept of it before was that it was always like, here are some worlds, yeah. they're all interlinked. It's important, because when we start talking about The Flash, or we start talking about Robin, or we start talking about especially hot, fucking Hawkman. <laughs> I'm excited for Hawkman, and Wonder- Wonder- I have absolutely no idea who Wonder- this guy is. There's the two most troublesome characters in DC continuity are Hawkman and Wonder Girl. I've not heard of either of them. So, they'll... they'll are they just th- straight up problematic? Yeah. They'll get their own episodes. And the Legion. The Legion's a sticky a sticky wicket as well. But, so when we do talk about The Flash and I start talking about pre-crisis and post-crisis yeah. and stuff like that, do you feel, and Golden Age and Silver Age, do you feel like you've got a better handle on what that means? Yeah. I think. Okay, awesome. I think I need to be reminded of it. Yeah. <laughs> but I know, like, the basic gist. Okay. Like, I, I feel like I know that Silver Age is, like, the first 30 years. No. It's, like, the first bit. No, the Golden Age. What? The Golden Age. Gold, Silver. Yeah. Crisis. Kind of, yeah. Like, yeah. He, there is a Bronze There's, like, age. a whole bunch of yeah. crises. There is, there is a Bronze Age as well, but... The nearer we get to modern day, the start and end points for those ages become a lot more nebulous. Okay. Like, there's a Bronze Age, and there's, like, after the Bronze Age bit, there's, like, the Modern Age, but the Modern Age was, like, 20 years ago now. It's not really modern. And it's I've really, heard, like, postmodern. Yeah, I've heard people refer to this age as the Prismatic Age. What? <laughs> Because a lot of comics these days are looking at what came before it and kind of reflecting it. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so before we wrap up, I, I, I want to hear any questions you've got left for me. This is, this oh, is, God. This is what we'll do at the end of every episode. So any, I can patch any holes, oh, hopefully. Oh, my God. Um, I think I've got too many to cover. I think it will all just be covered in... Later episodes. Later episodes. It's all just like. Is, is, are there any that are like burning at you that you. What, like, we'll just give me like one or two maybe so I can try and just patch some holes and maybe. I so, just some don't understand why they've done half of this. It's it's mainly to make it easier. But they've made it so hard. <laughs> yeah, I know. Is, Does everyone feel the same about this? Are there people that are like, yeah, the, the new 52 was a pretty decent idea? Yeah, like, yeah. There are. And then there are people who are like, this is the worst thing that's ever happened. Yeah. Well, because there's people like me who, like, a bunch of my favourite characters just flat up don't exist anymore. That sucks. Yeah. And I just just mixed up straight up and flat out. (laughs) Yeah, they flat up don't exist anymore. Yeah, they... Yeah. Like, Wally West just came back recently, and he's... Unrecognisable. He's the worst now. Like Bart Allen isn't related to Barry Allen anymore. Like, it's stuff we're getting into and it's stuff that really ticks me off. This is really sad. Yeah, but there were people after Crisis that were like, my characters don't exist anymore. So, like, this is like a real personal thing. Yeah. Like, they've. Because, like, you invest They've time. destroyed universes. You invest time and money into this stuff. Yeah, like, this is... You get invested in the characters and then they just destroy them and then, like... Mm -hmm. Yeah. I... Yeah, I don't get why they're like, this didn't happen, but then they're like, this did happen. Yeah. I can't get my head around why they can't just keep with this all happened, there were just different worlds. It's supposed to try and streamline it. (laughs) It doesn't. 
I know. Cause like, <laughs> if, you, if you look at Marvel, Marvel have Marvel have a, like a massive multiverse. Yeah. Like the the, the main universe in Marvel is Earth six one six. Why? Because Alan Moore, who uh, Alan Moore, who did Watchmen and Beef and Dare, yeah, he coined it because he was like, well, why would it be Earth one? Yeah. Uh, surely, comics. surely it's more likely to be like a random number. Oh, comics! Yeah. So, any more questions before? No, my comic, my, yeah, my comics, my comments on this are all based around why the writers thought these things were a good idea. It's more the editors. Than... It's more the editors and the higher ups in these. Okay, episodes. yeah. Why the people thought it was a good idea to do these things rather than why the characters interacted in a way there was? Mm-hmm. Because that's just comics. Yeah. Yeah. It, like, like, the, the, the best answer I can give you is it was an attempt to streamline things. Yeah, like, they wanted to make it easier and it just but, did not work. But, <laughs> I, as you can see, each time they do it, it's, it's like whack-a-mole. Yeah. It's like they, they bop down one problem. And then, like, and hey, another one, come back yeah. up. Yes. It's like they fix Superman and Hawkman pops up and they hit the Hawkman one and they keep fucking hitting the Hawkman one and it won't go down. It's like they waited for problems to arise before they solved them. Yeah. They didn't think it through enough. Mm-hmm. Like the example I always give is in the New 52, no crisis has happened. Yeah. But Batman still went back in time in Final Crisis. Yeah. Like, it, it really hurts my head to... It really <laughs> this hurt, is like, like what? Because I think that's going to be enough now. We're coming up to just under an hour, which I think is a perfect time yeah, for this an episode. Hour's good. Uh, if anyone's stuck with us, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm still confused. Uh, but less confused than before. I hope you really enjoyed it I hope you come back next week for The Flash a few things before we wrap up uh, I want to really really thank Joe Hunter top lad uh, Joe named the show I put a call on Twitter to say this is the podcast that we're going to do and Joe is an amazing amazing cartoonist uh, if you've not read Radical Radical Guardian Skate X by Chris Sims and Joe Hunter I highly recommend a comicsology. Joe drew like, what do you call it? Album artwork? Logo? The cover art. The, the cover art for this podcast, which... The thumbnail. Yeah. It's, like, we've not we've not seen it yet. No, we've seen, like... We've seen the sketch. We've, we've seen the sketch, and it was amazing. Yeah. But we've not seen the finished one. I'm sure it's beautiful. So, a big thanks to Joe. I'm excited. You can follow him at Joe underscore Hunter on Twitter. And check out his work, check out his comics. Love Joe to death. Uh, that's it, so... If anyone wants to contact us, you are at Hitchy on Twitter. Good luck spelling it. At H A I C H I. No! <laughs> you can't even spell it. H A C H I W E. Yes. H A C H I W E. I am at King Impulse. What we want to do as well is we want to get suggestions for episodes. So obviously, we're doing The Flash next. I want to do Superman, I want to do Batman, I want to do Robin. I don't, want, the basics. I don't want to do Hawkman. Yeah, but you have to now. Yeah. You said you're going to. We're, we're going to do some Marvel characters as well at some point. So please tweet us. Let us know some characters that you want us to talk about. Thank you so much for listening. Check. We should be on iTunes at some point, maybe. I don't know how iTunes works. Yeah, I'm going to sort all that out. So please try and find us on iTunes if we are there. All the episodes will be on kinkimpulse.com which is my website. I think that's it. We don't have a sign-off. I can't think of a catchy sign-off. We don't have anything yet. Uh, I I really enjoy doing this. I enjoy doing this. I feel feel smarter now. Well, uh, I'll see you next week. I feel like I know more.